I just want to welcome you to story time. This is the time we get together to get to hear about other women, Christian women all over the world that God is using and their stories matter. And I have a friend, you know, you ever had uh, a friend that you just meet for the first time and you realized you're just kindred spirits right away. Well, this is what Kim is. Uh, and so uh, it's Kim Crable, and she's with us today. And she is director of a ministry called uh, Roses and Rainbows Ministries. She's uh, she's the founder and the director of that ministry, and it's to help uh, people who are hurting and uh, find, and help them find hope. Um, for hurting women around the world. And it's exciting. She, God has used her in many ways. She's written eight books and, and, and booklets. And uh, the main book that we're going to look at today is Burdens to Blessings. And it's exciting to see what God has done in her life. She said she compared herself to a modern day Samar uh, Samaritan woman. Um, and that she's just saying, come and see what God has done. And God has done mighty things in her life as he took her from a place of brokenness and hurt and transformed her. And isn't it great that we have a transforming God? When we do, and we do. And so we just want to welcome Kim as she's going to share with us uh, today. Her story is an amazing story. Um, as I read her part of her book, I, I, here's, here's her book. Uh, in the beginning of the book I was reading and, and um, she started out in just kind of a fairy tale land and, and it didn't go so well after that. Uh, and she wants, she'll be sharing that story with you. And so Kim, welcome. And can you share with us a little bit about what transpired in your life as a young child, really, uh, and what caused you to be broken? Absolutely, Sheila. And thank you so much for having me. And oh, thank you. I so appreciate what you said because I felt the same way the first time we met. I actually had a friend who <clears throat> knew both of us and said, oh, you two must meet. You're so <laughs> like-hearted. And uh, we have a love for those who, to restore the broken and to help those um, with, with, with God's truth. So absolutely. I was born into a home and I truly thought I was a princess. I really did. Not because of the, the beautiful home or, or, or any of that. It was a very modest home. I felt like a princess. I felt majestic because of the love of my father. Um, he just loved me so much. I felt so safe and so secure. But at the age of four, at the age of four, I found out um, that I wasn't, that that really wasn't even my home. I found out that um, I would be moving to another home. And it's a complex story that, that is told in the book. But, but virtually what happened, Sheila, is that I was taken from one home where I felt like such a princess. I felt so majestic and so loved into a home that was entirely opposite. And I can remember one night um, when there was some um, arguing going on uh, with when I went into a home, which was with my real mom and dad, actually, is what happened. But what I overheard was uh, my real father saying, had it not been for that mistake, we wouldn't be in this mess. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, what mistake? What, what could they possibly be talking about? And as I listened, I realized, oh my gosh, mm. I'm the mistake. And so in, in a, within just a few words, I went from you know, feeling majestic to realizing I wasn't a princess. I was, I was the mistake. Wow. And how did that affect you? Uh, how did it begin to affect the way that you lived or the way that you thought about yourself? It had to be a, such a change going from, these were your grandparents actually that raised you those first few years and that grandfather that adored you you thought he was your father and to find out that none of that was true right. and this was what was true and then finding out oh I'm a mistake yes what did that do to you Sheila I was only four years old but I remember it as if it were yesterday it it I began to it traumatized me Hmm. I felt so alone. I felt in a land that I didn't understand. All the smells changed, all the lights from my bedroom windows, everything that made brought comfort. I remember my grandparents would, I would always awaken to the smell of bacon frying and there was a radio station that they loved. And I'd always wake up to that. And all of a sudden, you know, none, none of that was the same. And there was this fear 
And I can remember one night, the first night that I was in that home, Sheila, I can remember I was put to bed and I can remember thinking I would, I was so cold. I was just shaking. I thought, oh, I'm so cold. And then I realized as I pulled the covers up, I realized that wasn't helping. I wasn't cold. I wasn't shivering from the cold. I was shivering from the fear. Oh. I was so afraid. Mm -hmm. But God is so good because he brought to my memory all the things that my grandfather had said to me about how much Jesus loved me. And all of a sudden it was, it was a, like an angelic performance. I heard in my little mind, Jesus loves you, this you know, that beautiful song. Mm -hmm. And it put me to sleep. So even in my most traumatic moments, I can truly say that God was there. He wasn't there many ways that in the ways that I hoped he would be. You know, we want God to come in and, and with a magic wand sometimes and make it all okay. And he didn't do that. And, and that traumatized me even more as I was growing up because I couldn't understand. I thought that even God thought I was a mistake and I wasn't worthy of saving. Um, and so that was just false, another false, um, you know, teaching or not teaching, thinking that I had. But, um, but it, it traumatized me. I realized that I couldn't be that little girl. I had to shut down emotionally in lots of ways. And so what I became was a performer and a pleaser. That's what I just wanted to perform and please and do whatever would make anybody happy, make them happy. Okay. That's what you lived like until what age, how old were you when you really got to begin the healing process from all of this pain? Can I tell you, it was in my thirties wow. and I told you that I lived the rest of my life trying to run away from this, this thought that I had that I was a mistake. I, I was I was the great performer. I was the great pleaser. You know, Sheila, what I found out that I talk about a lot in the book is when you don't know who you are, you try to become who everyone expects you to be. Mm, absolutely. And when, when you don't know what to do, you try to do everything that everyone wants you to do. And it's it, it's exhausting. And um, as a teen, I was I was Miss Teen Time. I was Miss Cheerleader. I was Miss Straight A Student. But I was so broken and hurt on the inside. And I just wanted someone to see it. But, you know, we're masterful at, at pretending and Absolutely. asking, aren't we? Yes. We are so masterful. So it took me all the way through, um, you know, college into, into a marriage. And, you know, at one point, I guess what really started happening was um, that I started just feeling so exhausted. And, and then a lot of events, but I would say the catalyst that really brought me to the end of myself was my mom's death. At the She was 51. I was uh, in my early 30s, just had turned 30, and Sheila, she passed away, mm -hmm. and the, her last words to me were, don't live like I'm dying. Oh, my goodness. And my mom was a good mom. She was a beautiful woman, but life had just robbed her. She never felt worthy of God's love once she had had a child out of wedlock at the age. You know, now that's acceptable. There's no condemnation. Uh, 62 years ago, not yes. so, not so at all. And so there was a lot for her to live, but, but those words caused me to begin to rethink life and to really go, I don't know, you know, I don't know what I need to do, but I'm going to do something. And so I started pretending church, doing all the things that I'd accepted Christ when I was 12. Okay. So I knew him. But I, I just didn't feel, I was distant. I was distant from everyone. And anyone that listens to this that have felt that abandonment and that hurt and that mistrust takes a while to get back. But Sheila, I just, um, I was doing it. I was trying to do everything right. I was, you know, I was leading the women's ministry. I was singing in the choir. I was trying, but there was such a disconnect. And one day, one evening, after a large event, um, I walked into the grocery store after a large church event that I had orchestrated. And this lady caught me completely off guard, Sheila. She walked up to me. My mom had just passed away. I was in turmoil that no one knew. And she touched me. And she looked at me eye to eye. And she said, Kim, how are you doing? Really? And I didn't know what to do with it. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this woman really cares. And, and guess what? She's, she's standing there waiting for a response. Most people say, let's do lunch and keep going, right? Mm -hmm. She was waiting. She wanted to know. 
how I really was. Wow. I gave some quick answer. I went running outside, jumped in my car, and I started crying. And I was just, I was sobbing. And then I remembered something that my mother had said to me as a young girl, be a, be a big girl, be a big girl. Okay. And I was taking a deep breath thinking, okay, I'm going to be a big girl, Whew. you know. And I, I was saying, I'm okay, I'm okay. And Sheila, you know, God comes to us in different ways and different messages, but he's always honest to me. I heard him in my mind say, Kim, Kim, you are not okay. Wow. But you can be. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you can be. Mm. But you got to come back to me. You got to trust me. You got to love me. And um, with that, Sheila, when, when I felt God tell me that I could be okay, mm. that was all the hope that I needed. And that, that sent me on a hopeful path. And, um, and I ran home and I opened my Bible and I found the scripture of Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And I needed rest. I think our world needs rest. Absolutely. But as I began to dive into that, Sheila, it took me a long time. I mean, I, it took me 20 years to write this book, Burdens of Blessings. But when I dove into the meaning of Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, when I dove into the Greek and the Latin, I saw that rest there actually means reversal mm. and burden actually means a task in waiting. And I felt like God was saying, you're so burdened, you're so weary. And if you will give me this, you, you've tried giving me everything else, come to me with the burden. Bring, oh, wow. bring that burden. Because in that burden, I have a task for you. Mm. Um, and he and God used all of those things. Uh, every one of those things. Uh, he, it's, it's amazing. We all have a story. And I love the fact that um, in the, it, God teaches us in the word that the body of Christ is made up of stones, not bricks. My Bible teacher used to say that over and over again. Stones, not bricks. Stones are all different. Bricks are all the same. And yet in a lot of ways, we are the same. Uh, there's nothing new in demand. But at the same time, all of our stories are different of what God has done in our lives. And God wants to use what he, what has been, even the damaging things, even the hurtful things, even all those things. Um, I think about Joseph when God said, uh, you know, when, when Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And so if we could just learn that one thing, even all those things that happen to us, God's always using it for our good and his glory. And, um, and so tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, that's kind of where you were, where you came to, how God began to heal you. And through that healing process, he gave you a ministry to other women. And so you begin then to start your ministry, Kim. Uh, tell us a little bit about how God did that. You know, Sheila, I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't out to try to start a ministry. I just needed help. I knew that God said I could be okay. And I trusted him. I just thought, I, I, I'm going to trust you. And so I began digging into my Bible and I made a promise to him. God, whatever you ask me to do, I will try my best to do it. Now I failed it many times over, but I've always tried. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember he started pointing out women to me and I would look at women and I think, oh, I'd like to be like her. I'd like to be patient like her. I'd like to be kind like her. I'd like, and I began to notice these women. And then I felt like God said, now invite them into your home and tell them your story. Oh, wow. And I went, oh no, 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 no. I, I <laughs> know. These people will never accept me if they know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a mistake here. I don't, I don't even, I can't, I can't Lord. But then it was like that whisper, but you told me. So Sheila, it was a hard, one of the hardest things I've ever done. I'll never forget hearing the doorbell ring and I'm on the other side thinking all these people think they know me and I'm about to tell them. But they came <laughs> in, Sheila, they came in and I said, ladies, I just have to tell you something. I, you know, I want you, you know a lot about me, but I want, I want to tell you the me that you don't know. 
because mm-hmm. I want to be more like you all. And I told them, I said, I want to be, but I need help to be what God wants me to be. I was stripped down vulnerable. And, um, and I began, I had these bricks, these, um, uh, like you use in uh, preschool, you know, the cardboard brick. Yeah. Uh-huh. And as I began talking to them, I began building this wall around me. I was telling them about my hurts and how they couldn't see the wall that I was from behind. Oh, wow. that I was behind. And it was a visual and I built it. And I said, but today, ladies, with your help, I'm going to tell you who I am. And I'm going to come out from behind this wall. Mm. And I began telling them and Sheila, I, I just, I just poured it out and then I stood up and I walked through that wall. And as soon as I did, I closed my eyes and my first thought was, oh my gosh, I did it. I did it. And then my next thought was, oh my gosh, I did it. My secrets are out. (laughs) And I I kept my eyes closed for a long time. I, I think maybe I thought they might run away. But Sheila, this is what I learned is you can't truly begin to heal until you speak your hurt and someone receive, receives it. Mm-hmm. And when I opened my eyes, Sheila, every one of those women were still sitting right there. <laughs> and they were crying with me. And there was no shame like I thought. There was no condemnation like the enemy had been telling me. You know, if if not if nothing else, they they loved me more. They accepted me. And I realized I really am gonna be okay. Mm. I've got friends now that know me. And so from that, we started, I said, okay, that's my story. What's your story? And we began meeting weekly. And then they would say, well, I have a sister. I have a neighbor. Before long, my house was completely filled with women because we all long for a place where we can just be who we are, right? Right. And be loved for who we are. And be accepted. Yes. And know that that's that's your growing point. That that's where you that's your the catalyst to everything you want to be mm-hmm. is when you can get. And once I once I spoke that spoke my story, guess what? The shame, the guilt, the regret, mm-hmm. all that it was like shackles started falling off. And that's the value of friendship. That's the value of being around women. And that's why I love you so much, Sheila. That's your heart, and that's what you do for women. And you know, just to have someone that you that's approachable and mm-hmm. I know people look at you and go oh my gosh that's she Irwin you know and and I remember when someone first said that it's like and they said but she is the most approachable godly woman that you will feel so safe with and you know that's what I want to be now I want to be a safe place and mm-hmm. and that's why I call myself a modern day Samaritan woman because I can't keep my mouth closed about it. I run everywhere <laughs> saying come see a man that knows everything about you and simply adores you absolutely absolutely and everybody I appreciate those words thank you so much that is my that is my heart um you know because I think um so often we do wear masks and we do hide and and to be able to say you know I'm given to fear uh you know that that's my biggest you know, my, that my biggest enemy is fear or, or anger or, you know, whatever that thing is that you're having to deal with, but to come alongside and to love one another. And I don't know if you, I was an only child. And so friendship has always been so important to me um, because I didn't have sisters, uh, you know, and, and uh, until I was 31, my, my, I had a step, I got a stepsister at that point and she was wonderful. She's with the Lord now, but, but, you know, um, so those things were very important to me. And I see that in you as well, understanding that as we rally around the word of God, the transforming power of the word of God is so unbelievable. Uh, and though our stories are very different, they're very much alike. I was 20 years old when I honestly understood that Christ, the Christ that saved me also wanted to live his life through me. I didn't understand how to do that. And when I learned that he would live his life through me, it was transformational. Yeah. Um, and, and I want that for other women. And I see that in you, that God has indeed broken down those walls, those walls that would keep us from relating to one another. And the one thing I thought I, I thought of when you were talking was, uh, you know, about the, when you revealed your, what you thought were big, bad, black secrets or whatever, reveal those to other people that the shame was gone and the guilt was gone. And uh, 
the Satan loves for us to keep things in the dark. Yes. And hidden. Yes. Uh, but when we bring them out into the light, what we thought's going to happen, actually the opposite happens. Yes. Uh, as God brings things into the light and we deal with those things. Now, I don't think we ought to flaunt our sin, uh, but we do need to be able to be honest and to love one another in the midst of our struggles. Yes. And so that's what I've seen in you. And out of that, God opened up, as you said, in fear and trembling, you began teaching uh, and, uh, and, and begin to reach out to women. And God just opened one more door and one more door and one more door. It's amazing to me how God um, does those things mm -hmm. as, as we step forward with him and are available to him yes. and just say, you know, any old bush will do. I love that. Uh, Major Ian Thomas used to say that all the time. Um, any old bush will do. There was nothing special about the bush. Right. Uh, it was what was in the bush that counted. And that's true of us. There's yeah. nothing special about you. There's nothing special about me. Um, but it's what's in us that's special. And so because of that, God could use you. And he began to open doors. He, he did. He did. We went from, you know, from from a, my, that home then to um, to a church to have conferences and from Confident. Then I was so established there, and then God moved us from uh, Augusta, Georgia, to Baltimore, Maryland, and I thought the ministry was over. And what God was doing was, you know, I, I had two young boys when we moved, and and to me, I felt like my first ministry was in my home. So I wasn't going to go out and be uh, working and, and traveling and speaking when I had two little boys at home that needed me. Um, and so I just shut down all my speaking engagements. And you know, in that God, that's where God said, "Well, let's start writing." And so I was writing while I was, you know, raising the boys. And then uh, as soon as my youngest one went off to college, it was like, okay, let's start back up. And it was really amazing. By then I'd written books and, you know, and God just allowed me opportunities to continue to work in the lives of women. You see, the one thing I've noticed is people will ask me, do you ever get tired of ministry? Do you ever get tired of doing ministry? Are you, and, and maybe you feel this way. I don't see it as, doing ministry it, it's just who I am absolutely I, I cannot you put me on an island I'll find somebody to talk to <laughs> and, and I won't talk about the weather I will say what's hurting your heart mm -hmm. how can I pray for you what you know let's let's go deep and and um and that's that's just where I am and uh and that's what I love to do but you know and then God opened up radio and then and now he's opened up tv and so every opportunity that he gives to me I always walk through it with fear and trembling just like that first one but I've learned that that's a good place I've learned if I ever feel comfortable and confident then maybe I've gotten it more into self-confidence than God confidence so I, I don't mind the the fear and trembling I, I really prefer that because I just lean on God in every step that he takes me so Absolutely. And I, but I just love, it's in Revelations where God says that people will be saved by the telling of the story and the sharing mm -hmm. of our testimony. And so I feel that every woman has something so valuable to Absolutely. say, every woman. And so I just want to help give her the biblical tools and God confidence to unlock that so that her shame and guilt and regret can fall off or, or her dreams can come true or whatever it is that God wants to do in her life. Because you can bet God has a plan for each and every one of us, right? Absolutely. He does. And I, 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 I'm like you. I, uh, ministry's just kind of been always been an outflowing from our lives. My husband was in ministry as well and radio and television uh, as well. And then uh, you know, God's open doors and closed doors and open more doors. And, you know, you just keep going through all those, all those wonderful doors. And as he, as he does all those things um, and the tools that he's given us. And I, I think my admonition to the women out there would be what tools does he put in your hands? You can reach people I can't reach. Yes. Uh, there are people in your world yes. that you can reach that I can't reach. And so be, don't say, oh, I can't be used of God. Yes, you can. God, God desires to use us. And, you know, we've been to Israel. Uh, Hank's been 20 times. I've only been twice, but we've been to Israel. And the first time I saw the Dead Sea, I was just like, oh my goodness, it really is dead. But not only is it dead, everything around it's dead. Now, it's not a problem with that, with the Dead Sea water coming in, plenty of water's coming in. 
It's just nothing's going out. Yes. And it causes all these minerals to, you know, I mean, you could drink that water and die. Yeah. Uh, it's so toxic. And so um, it, that's true of our lives. God wants us to be taken in, absolutely. But we need to be giving out somewhere or we become stagnant mm -hmm. because those things that come into us uh, as we give them away become even more and more and more real to us. So, okay, Kim, tell us before we close, what are some of the tools that our ladies that you can offer these ladies that are listening um where can they go well you know you can go to amazon and get your books or probably other places i don't know bookstores christian yes. bookstores uh, and uh, barnes and noble maybe uh, yes. to get your books but how can they know more about you uh do you have a website I do, and they can go, it's just kimcrable.org. It's really easy. Okay. Um, just Kim, it's C-R-A-B-I-L-L, -L, kimcrable.org. And under that, you'll see all the Facebooks, you know, and Instagrams and all that. And um, yeah, just hook up with us. You know, it, it's it's so much fun. It, that's the other thing, Sheila. I know you and I both love to laugh and enjoy life. You know, it's like, this is, this lot. God says he not, he came not only to give us life, but the abundant life. Absolutely. And, you know, it, let's pick that up. You know, let's embrace that. Um, you know, life, life is not going to be forever. You know, we're living it. This is it. Uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to be perfect. You know, let's see what God has in store for us. And, you know, let's quit fighting our past and let's start fighting for our future and Absolutely. what God has in store for us. Absolutely. And proclaiming what God, great things that God has done. And my guest, Kim, I hope you've enjoyed hearing her because that's what she does. That's all she does is proclaim the mighty works of God. And so uh, I would challenge you to read one of her books and and to learn uh, about what God has done in her life and what not just what God's done in her life, ladies, but what God can do in your life. Yes. God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son. Yeah. for you to believe in so that you could have eternal life mm -hmm. and then not only does he want to give you eternal life which begins right now but that eternal life he wants to make it abundant and I think that's what we hear Kim saying God has filled her life with his abundance and so thank you for joining us and until next time God bless you.